What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike Dyack. I am a master plumber and licensed HVAC contractor in New York, South Carolina, and Florida. This morning, Tuesday, October 1st, 2024, heading to a service call in Yonkers. We got a Burnham Alpine 285, I believe it is. And he wants us to do a combustion analysis and just do a quick little checkup and inspection. Make sure he's good before he starts using his system for the winter. He's got an indirect water heater, so it runs year round. So eh, we would probably see a problem if there was one through normal use. But nonetheless, let's go see what's going on. Smash that thumbs up button, guys. And if you haven't done so already, I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Let's go. All right. Power is off. Verify that the screen is also off. Let's do a quick little visual. Let's open up the front cover. Make sure nothing is out of the ordinary. We don't see any charred wires or anything rubbing where it shouldn't be. Looks okay. Let's remove and put that off to the side. Okay. Inside the front of our boiler, just do some quick little identification. Um, we have a bleeder here to get any air out of the heat exchanger. A manual reset, high limit sensor. We have a pressure troll. We have a few sensors along the left side of the heat exchanger. High limits and temperature sensors, there's three of them there. Gas valve, blower motor, flame sensor, and igniter. All right, let's remove the harness for our flame sensor. Let's remove the two screws that hold on that flame sensor. Beautiful, don't lose them. Let's pull that out. And uh, we have a little bit of discoloration on there, some use. It's okay. We're gonna take a piece of emery paper or open mesh scratchy paper and clean that up. You can also use a soft bristle brush. Some guys believe in the dollar bill technique, but let's defer to the manual and see what it says. Flame sensor, all right, we used a Number 20, Torx bit, and remove the two screws. And also you wanna make sure that you, when you do take it off, that the little gasket that's right there, that it stays intact. If it crumbles apart or is just dry rotted, you're gonna to wanna to replace that, okay? We're gonna clean the flame sensor with steel wool. Do not use sandpaper or sand cloth. Huh, interesting. Check the porcelain for cracks and carbon buildup. So let's get a piece of steel wool. All right, so following the manufacturer's guidelines, we're gonna take a piece of steel wool. We're gonna clean off Nice and clean. All right, I reinstalled that flame sensing rod. Gasket's still intact. Now I remove the ignition cable and the ground harness from the ignition rod. And let's take that same 20 Torx bit and remove it. clean this one as well all right 120 let's make this a little bit hotter all right all right so i just raised up the aquastat on the indirect the zone valve has no resistance so it's open 
we are piped in. Hmm. Is the indirect circulator. It's calling for central heat though. He's complaining about phantom heat into a zone. This is it's also cool to the touch. Let's look here, that's cool. That's also cool. Resistance, resistance. All right, so I'm gonna use the Guide SenseMart. This is the E2 thermal imaging camera. And let's see if we can verify his complaint of phantom heat going to a zone when the system is on. So as you can see, we have at a hundred and over a hundred to 120, 130 degrees of temperature going to the indirect water heater on the opposite side. It does cool off. This is 105, 80. Let's look at this other one right here, 95 degrees. 90.86, that's really pretty cool and it's dead-ended as you can see. Let's go to the other side. He was suspecting that maybe some of the zone valves here are the culprit. So there are those two zone valves. Nothing heating there at all. The piping, the PEX, 84 degrees. That one, 81, 82. What do we got here? What is this? This right here is just domestic hot water. Check out our main zone. That's also cool. All right, remove the flu sensor, flu stack sensor. And we have our probe of our Testo 320 combustion analyzer. See what our readings are. We're going to adjust right now. We're at a hundred percent. Put it there, leave it at a hundred percent. We have all the heating zones on right now. And our tip of the combustion analyzer probe is dead center of the flu. This is what we're working with. Right, let's take a look at these numbers real quick. Um, if you look at page 90 of the installation and operating manual for an Alpine 285, we need to be at uh, 3.5 to 6.5 on high fire. And we were at 5.7. Our parts per million of CO needs to be under 100. We're at 49. And our percent of CO2 should be between 9.9 .9 and 8.2. Let's scroll down. And we're at 8.52. So we're well within specifications there let's set this to low fire and see what kind of numbers we get so let's clipboard those numbers and let's enable low fire perfect 26 percent on the manual speed control let's see what kind of numbers we're working with Still have a low stack temperature, 5.5% of O2. Low fire needs to be 3.5 to 7. Our carbon monoxide, 18 and dropping. 
96.3% efficient and 8.63% of CO2 and we need to be between 7.9 and 9.9 .9. so perfect numbers again.